And then we have the main event, which, as you mentioned, believe it or not, is Daddy Magic challenging Roderick Strong for the international title. I mean, they had a fun match. And the people who were there were chanting Papa Magi and all that stuff. And uh, Daddy magicked up and hit a bunch of lariats and corner punches. And people were counting along in French. And that was pretty cool. But uh, the kingdom kept trying to distract. It kept failing. But eventually it worked. And Roddy hit a knee and won. I thought, okay, if you're going to beat the guy in his hometown anyway, if you couldn't have Roddy beat Daddy Magic clean. This all felt like a Sunday Night Heat segment. My my bigger issue with it was Daddy Magic was so over, and I wasn't expecting him to win the international title, but he couldn't beat somebody. It didn't have to be the main event. He could have beaten somebody. He could have beaten somebody in that Diana Parazzo versus whatever her name was match. That match didn't need to be on the show. No. Uh, the Mariah May match with whatever her name was. Nikita. You know, one of those could have been cut. Yeah, there was Rose. Let let Daddy... And here's the thing. Daddy Magic does commentary every week. They do not push him as a serious wrestler. His partner is off doing something else. Like, set up some feud. You know, you go into his hometown, spend four weeks. Somebody keeps yelling at him during commentary every week. He finally snaps. They have a brawl. You do the match in the guy's hometown. People love him. He gets a win. Everybody goes home happy. Instead, we have a totally random Roderick Strong Daddy Magic match. People go nuts for Daddy Magic. He gets beaten in the main event in his hometown. It's like, wh- why? Why? I don't know. I don't know. Can I say one other thing? Because huh? it reminds me of that home invasion thing. And it reminds me of this, Okay. I don't want to get all hard on AEW or anything like that, but interest is way down from several years ago. Yeah. And the main reason for that remains that when AEW began, WWE sucked. fucking sucked. Yes. They didn't just suck, Vinny. They fucking sucked. I stand corrected. Okay? Yeah. And it was the perfect time for an alternative to spring up. And there were so many things that AEW did better than WWE. And that's why the the, uh, thing that people still love to bring up on uh, Twitter to this day, going to be a massacre. There was a period where, you know, the the demos for Raw and Dynamite were getting pretty fucking close. And it it was getting close, but then it wasn't anymore. And now it's so far off. And one of the things is, and this is that home invasion, they did a home invasion angle on SmackDown. L.A. Knight showed up at A.J. Styles' house, and they had a brawl. It was miles better than what AEW did. And, you know, one of the things that people hated about WWE was all the heat and beating the baby faces in their hometown. And now, I've said it a thousand times, if you watch WWE... The baby faces are winning in their hometown 90% of the time. And if you watch AEW, they're getting beat in their hometown 90% of the time. AEW needs to do something better than WWE. The more things they can do better than WWE, the better. Right now, you know, match quality on pay-per-view, higher than WWE. But, you know, match quality on television is uh, is better than WWE, but it's not like blowing WWE away. I mean, the best matches do, but, I mean, storytelling, they're doing it better in WWE. Building up pay-per-views, they're doing it better in WWE. You know, uh, interview segments, they're doing it better in WWE. Backstage segments, they're doing it better in WWE. It's WrestleMania season. Like, they got to do this better than WWE. You can't do WWE light and do it worse. And there was a lot on both of the shows. In a million years, they would never have had that home invasion thing referenced on Collision and not had a video package, open the show with a video package, start with a video package, and then go to the segment. Never would have happened. So that's just one of many things, but that really hit me watching these two shows. You're not wrong. Um, And... uh... I, I enjoyed Collision a lot more than Rampage, but Rampage just felt like, I mean, it was not 
miles and miles away from the worst show I ever saw. But I, if you missed it, do you need to watch it on your DVR? Not really. You can just delete that and go on with your life. For the sake of completion, I will note there was uh, some post-match shenanigans there where the best friends chased off the kingdom, but they were attacked by uh, the Young Bucks and laid out and nutshotted to set up the tag team match. Uh, I think it was on the next show. I have forgotten already, but they had a match. I think it's on Dynamite. But we did watch AEW Collision the very next night, March 30th, 2024. A much better show. Yeah, this was like Dynamite. They had an awesome opener. Yes. An awesome main event. And uh, the rest of the show was fine. <laughs> that's, that's about right, but hey, that's fine. That's and a, they did 4,000 people. That's a good TV show right there. And way, it, way better than usual attendance. And way better than usual attendance, way better than usual reactions and heat. London, Ontario was a great crowd. So it's Adam Copeland versus a mystery opponent. He has finished his chapter with Christian Cage, going back to the Cope Open, Cope Open and uh, with the TNT title on the line. And though he didn't say this, this is what Cody Rhodes is doing this belt with this belt back in the day. So it's like going back when Cody was fighting Eddie Kingston and uh, Ricky Starks and War Horse. You never knew he was going to come through that door. And you never know when Matt Cardona is going to step up to face his old mentor, I suppose. And... Uh, the, the, the edge head attacks the edge here, and the crowd was white hot, which is nice. So they had a, a modern match in that there there was not really a heel and baby face. There was no big, long heat segment and a superhero comeback. The crowd clearly liked Adam more than they liked Cardona, and Cardona did some dirty fighting, and they booed him a lot. But it's basically back and forth the entire time. They build up to the big moves. Uh, Cardona gets the impaler for an earfall. Copeland gets a powerbomb for two. Uh, Copeland tries a power bomb, and uh, 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 Cardona hits the, I believe it's the radio silence, which used to be the Rough Rider. It's fucking like Larry. And uh, that was a, I prefer the Rough Rider. Yeah. Yes. It's a great near fall. But then Cardona tries a spear, gets speared, and gets pinned. And here we are, well into 2024. Adam Copeland is still tearing shit up. I thought this match was great. This is one of the best Matt Cardona matches I've ever seen. The fans in the building knew exactly who he was they put him over on commentary as the king of the indies the fans are chanting holy shit like they can't believe this dream match and they ate this match up and this is awesome chance adam chance all the big near falls at the end adam spears him and pins him this felt hot and matt cardona man I think he's actually happy doing what he's doing. He's probably overjoyed. Probably, yeah. Like, he's making a shit ton of money, and he does whatever the fuck he wants. I mean, this is probably like Moxley's dream. to be able to do what Cardona's doing. But uh, actually, Moxley's got the dream job, because he's actually doing what Cardona's doing, but also being paid gigantic money by AEW. Sure. But uh, yeah, this match was great, and, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if Cardona's getting offers all over the place after this one, because, you know, what a reaction. So afterwards, the lights go out. Malachi Black confronts Copeland. Brawl breaks out, and uh, Mark Bristow, Briscoe and Eddie Kingston make the save. You know who's great in this show, and he's great pretty much every week, is Nigel McGuinness. Because, first of all, he's always talking about Christian Cage. Still a Christian Cage fan, even though Christian Cage has been out of the window for out of the, off this, out of the picture for a couple weeks now. But as this brawl breaks out, Eddie Kingston runs into the ring, and Nigel screams at the top of his English lungs, That's a fan! I laughed so hard. They very casually threw out uh, Mark Briscoe challenging Eddie Kingston at Supercard of Honor. I guess it's on Friday. Uh, it is. It is on Friday. I mean, if you're gonna plug it, plug it. It's like why? Do they, why do you even bother bringing it up? There was no graphic. Well, no, they they did plug it later yeah. during an interview segment. They could have done a lot more. My big issue was after that goddamn fucking match with the House of Black versus the Infantry where the House of Black is supposed to try to make him look great before losing to him, but instead they absolutely killed him fucking dead. Uh, we What do we have here? Malachi appears in the ring, and Buddy ends up jumping at him from behind, and Mark Briscoe's music hits. Mark Briscoe is challenging for the Ring of Honor title on Friday. He runs down to the ring to make the save, and as God is my witness... He didn't even hit a punch. He got in the ring. He hit a wild swing. He missed. He got fucking booted by Malachi. And then Buddy ran him over and killed him. He got nothing. They crushed this guy. And then out comes Eddie. 
and the heels disappear. And I was like, Jesus Christ, this guy is challenging for the Ring of Honor title. You could not have made him look like a bigger geek. Like, he may as well be with the infantry. I, I couldn't even believe my eyes. Let the guy make a comeback and then kill him. At least nothing. Just killed. Lexi interviews FTR. I didn't know what was going on with the promos in the show, the backstage promos, but someone decided what this show needs is extreme zooming in and out during promos. A lot of that going on. And then Cash notes, yes, we are in fact on a losing streak. In our last match, we got choked out by the Blackpool Combat Club. Yeah, that's right. You sure did. And uh, you're in the tournament and they're not. I know they were busy this weekend. Oh, they wrestled on the show, so uh, whatever. Uh, Infantry is a Cinderella team, but we must beat them and become the first three-time champs in AEW history. Shivani interviews the acclaimed. Billy Gunn is pissed off at Jay White. What a line, by the way, they said at the end. There will be no Cinderella story tonight for the infantry. I was like, this promo would have been so much better if they hadn't killed the infantry in that House of Black match. Yeah. I mean, what fucking Cinderella story? No shit there ain't going to be a Cinderella story. Yes. I watched their match. So Billy says Jay White likes to brag about selling out MSG, which is something Billy Gunn has done several times. He lost count of how many times. And unlike Jay White, he usually won when he did that. So next week on Dynamite, Billy Gunn versus Jay White one-on-one -on -one in a match that's going to happen on live national television. We'll see how good you really are, they said. Yes. Damn straight. Sure will. So then Max Caster is out there in his Tegan and Sarah shirt, promising to stay backstage with the ass boys. Also drops a twink blade, Jay White in here. Man, that was weird, dude. This was a hot crowd. Yeah. And he calls him the twink blade. Yeah. And this just got a very awkward, quiet reaction. Yeah, yeah. Like, these fans had no idea. Are we supposed to cheer this the sounds twink like a, blade? This sounds like a slur. We <laughs> they they did not they were not sure about that one at all. Yeah. It was very awkward. And uh, between Daddy Ass and uh, all that uh, caster stuff, Bowens continues to be the straightest guy on this team somehow. Uh, Jay, you ran like a bitch before Mrs. Ass slapped the pubes off your face. Is what Bowen says. So yes, it is Ass versus Blade on Wednesday. That's fine. And how they got to this match is fine. But for God's sake, just book this unification match or whatever it is you're gonna do and end this program. It's not even a unification match, dude. Only one set of titles are on the line. God. All we can hope is that one team wins both, and then they're not unified, but at least we only have, you know? But then this other trio's team's going to at least get in the picture somehow? Yes. Yeah, that would help. I don't know. Hey, if you love this clip, have I got a deal for you. WrestlingObserver.com. Do you have a commute? Do you work out at the gym? Do you like listening to audio on your headphones or your earbuds or whatever the kids use today? Well, WrestlingObserver.com will give you all the audio you'll ever need in your life. Over 15,000 audio shows. Every audio show that we have ever done, dating back to 2005, is available for subscribers at WrestlingObserver.com. Every time a new show comes out, you can podcast it directly to your phone. If you have a commute... As noted, if you go to the gym, if you like to lift weights and listen to Granny review soap operas, well, WrestlingObserver.com gets you full access to all of these shows and all of these archives. You can go back and listen to TNA reviews from 2010. You can go back and listen to reviews of every WWE pay-per-view, every big story that's ever happened in wrestling. You can get access to that at WrestlingObserver.com. Plus, full access to the Wrestling Observer newsletter every week. 40,000 words of news and information in pro wrestling. Why get all your scoops off Reddit, which aren't even accurate most of the time? Go right to the source, the Wrestling Observer newsletter. You also get Observer archives dating back to 1990. So check it out today. Thousands of issues of the Wrestling Observer newsletter. Tens of thousands of hours of audio. All for $12.99 per month or as low as $9.99 if you sign up for a year. You'll never, you'll never run out of audio if you subscribe to WrestlingObserver.com. So head up there, check it out today, and I'll talk to you again after a while.